Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So today, we are going to uh, talk about Russia and Ukraine and the hypersonic technologies and diversity and masculinity and traditional military values and all of that stuff. Because for whatever reason, right now, which seems like a really weird time to bring this up, the idea of needing that super masculine military has become a talking point again, primarily on the right. So we're, we're going to go over it. This statement is from George Papadopoulos, but it's just one of many from the, the, the commentators at large. While we have been giving our troops diversity training, Russia has now developed and used a hypersonic missile in the war for the first time in history. And I mean, yeah, that's true. They did, uh, they did use one recently to hit a low-priority target, and it's worth noting that most analysts believe they used it because they're out of precision-guided munitions. Um, and, and it's also worth noting that it didn't perform the way that they thought it would. And it's also worth noting the reason that Russia really needs this technology to function is to penetrate the opposition's air defenses, whereas the United States hasn't uh, put a lot of effort into publishing its advances in this technology or announcing how it has been applied because, generally speaking, the United States just destroys the opposition's air defenses. Don't really worry too much about it them after that. Um, but after all of that commentary on the hypersonic side, there's that idea again. We're giving our troops diversity training. The implication being that that's weak. That's not a good idea. But that's not true. I mean, let's be clear. The, the super masculine Russian military that everybody likes to hold up as the example um, it has been ground to a halt by the they-them military of Ukraine that allows trans troops and has an entire unit of LGBTQ people whose crest, I'm not joking about this, it's, it's a unicorn. I'm, I'm dead serious. And that's who's stopping them. Maybe that hyper-masculine stuff isn't what it's got out to be. Maybe it's more important to understand your opposition. And you can get that through diversity. You can get it through training, or you can get it through employing a whole bunch of people, which then you'll need training on how they can interact with each other. Um, and if you have that kind of diversity and that kind of understanding of other cultures, it, it helps you avoid mistakes. Like, say, I don't know, assuming that simply because a country you're about to invade has a whole bunch of people that speak the same language as you do, that they'll fight on your side. I seem to remember sometime recently one of those super masculine militaries making that mistake and it costing them dearly. The reality is that you don't have to be a military scholar to understand this. You just need Netflix. Watch The Last Kingdom. Why did Edward want Uhtred? Because he understood the Danes. Understanding your opposition is important. It wins wars. Being culturally diverse allows you to understand your opposition. I would like to quote the great military philosophers, Rage Against the Machine. Yes, I know my enemy. The, uh, that references a, a quote. If you know your enemy in yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. If you know yourself, but not the enemy, you will suffer defeat for every victory. If you know neither yourself or the enemy, you will succumb in every battle. It's from the Art of War. It's written in the 5th century BC. It doesn't really get more traditional than that. When it comes to military thought, that, that's pretty much the definition of, like, traditional belief systems. 
it, this idea has been around a long time, and generally speaking, the militaries that use it, that employ it, win. The general tone of all of this is once again to try to create an outgroup to other people. Well, those people, we don't need to pay any attention to being diverse. If they can't just assimilate into the way we do things, well, then we don't need them. The problem is if they assimilate and they just become another cog in the wheel, they don't provide the added insight and you lose the value of being diverse. Um, it's probably worth understanding that America's elite, the U.S. Army Special Forces, go through a whole lot of training to understand various cultures before they deploy, before they go somewhere, so they don't make mistakes. And it helps them a lot. It's one of the reasons they're so successful. Um, so, for whatever reason, in the midst of the, the super masculine military that they're pointing to just failing, this has become a talking point again. It's worth just acknowledging that and being ready to see it. Because generally, it takes a pretty nasty tone. Um, you know, what Papadopoulos said wasn't horrible or offensive in any real way, but that's not always how it's framed. So anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good day.